What's up guys, Ash here. Uh, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and hopefully your presents are being delivered by Santa Irene. Uh, this is artwork done by Leah. You guys may know her uh, as Couscous Dumpling inside our Discord server, uh, but she does a lot of different uh, variations here for Troubleshooter. Super cool, uh, super awesome. Uh, she does also take commissions, so you know, hit her up. I'll leave a link down below in the description for you guys to check her out. Uh, anyway, today, of course, we are actually checking out Battle Mage Irene, and this video is a long time coming. Um, this never really fit with my play style, but obviously I want to give players an idea of how to play it and, you know, what it offers. So without further ado, let's hop right into it. At a high level overview, Battle Mage plays a very niche role in Troubleshooter. Uh, at first I thought it was very similar to Martial Artist based on its hybrid tank damage combination. Instead, now I find that while it does tank very well, it especially lies in handling bosses. Uh, it's an odd combination to be a tank boss killer, and it's certainly one of the strongest classes in the game. Important to note that traditional battle mage leans into the elementalist subclass, as it primarily focuses around one core concept, concentrated magic power, or what I'll refer to as CMP for the rest of the video. Uh, if you haven't really touched Battle Mage, reading all the factors behind CMP can be a little bit daunting, uh, but we'll try and break that down as the video goes on. For starters, one stack of CMP is equivalent to one Vigor Recovery and 20 ESP Power, and can stack up to an incredible 25 times. This basically means a bonus 25 Vigor Recovery and 500 ESP Power at full power. This gives it a similar feel to Albus's Magic Knight, where as the fight goes on, increasing stacks in CMP generally make Irene stronger and stronger. Uh, so how exactly do we gain stacks of CMP? To better digest this, I've divided CMP into two categories, in combat and out of combat. In combat modifiers are Magic Absorption, uh, which is when you land a critical hit, which gives plus one CMP. Uh, magic Absorption also removes any buffs on a target that takes a critical strike. Each buff removed gives an additional plus one CMP. Uh, magic Relief will give plus one CMP for target out of action. Magic Restructuring, which is uh, triggering Iron Heart Impulse Fields and Magic Fields, adds plus one CMP. And then finally, Magic of Opportunity uh, is plus one CMP. And finally, of all the in-combat modifiers, this is probably the most important one. Uh, you're going to get a mastery called Magic Withdrawal. Um, this is literally going to recover half of your stacks of CMP. And this is particularly important because every time that you use a CMP attack, you're going to use all stacks of CMP. And so uh, restacking them would normally be quite a nightmare. And that's where magic withdrawal comes in. So we're going to hit this clown at 25 stacks at the max amount. And uh, magic withdrawal is going to recover half of all those stacks used, as you can see right there, with 12 uh, remaining. Uh, this allows you to upkeep your CMP costs and kind of just keep Irene in the fight consistently running through her stacks. But most of the time you'll be gaining your stacks from out of combat modifiers uh, such as Magic Accelerating Circuit, Magic Duplication, and Overflowing Magic. Uh, if you're currently at 0 CMP, CMP like at the start of a map, you'll gain an initial 1 CMP. This is then powered by Magic Duplication, which will literally double your stacks of CMP at the start of every turn. Um, so from the beginning, uh, you can see this is turn one, Irene has no buffs, right? And so when we end our turn, Magic Accelerating Circuit's then going to take over and give her an initial one. Um, and then this will double at the start of your turn, thanks to Magic Duplication. So now we have two, uh, two will turn into four, and so, you know, this will keep multiplying by 2, 4 will turn into 8, and then of course 8 to 16, and then 16 to 32, or essentially 25, which is the cap for stacks. Um, using just Mac, or uh, Magic Accelerating Circuit will get you to max stacks in exactly 5 turns, and that's not bad, but there's definitely a better way. And so this is where Overflowing Magic comes in. Um, if you trigger Magic Acceleration, uh, and you start a turn with Magic Acceleration activated, you'll get a bonus to CMP. So notice we went from a zero, uh, you know, this is turn one, 
with zero CMP straight into uh, six. And so this is because magic accelerating circuit is giving you one because you have none plus two from overflowing energy for a total of three times two from magic duplication. And this is very important. Magic duplication will always occur at the end of the full calculation, which is totally awesome uh, because if it didn't, you'd have a much different number here. Uh, so if we were to end our turn again, it will be six plus two from overflowing energy, right? So eight times two uh, for magic duplication for 16. And then of course, you know, again, uh, 16 plus two, 18 times two, 36 or 25, which is the max stacks. This is particularly important because if you saw with magic accelerating circuit, it took exactly five turns to get to 25 CMP. But with overflowing uh, magic, this will take you exactly three turns. You'll go from 0 to 6, 6 to 16, and 16 to 25. To make this even more ridiculous, uh, Battle Mage has a mastery set called Magic Explosion, which is just, this is just going to blow your guys' mind. So uh, you can see right here, Thundercon currently has 1175 health, and Irene using Firewall Carriage is going to hit each time for 1611. Uh, and so important to note that Thundercon here has overdrive, meaning he'll turn to Berserk at one health. And so unless you get him to overdrive and then hit him in the same uh, sequence, it means he'll be able to stay in Berserk. And so you can see that uh, she's dealing 1600 per, per hit uh, non-block. But what happens if you get blocked? Uh, well, that would actually be exactly half or 800. Instead, uh, it hits for literally double the block damage, uh, which would have been 1600 um, had it been a regular hit, thanks to Magic Explosion. Um, Magic Explosion will grant you a 4% chance to deal 100% bonus damage per 1 CMP. This of course means that at 25 stacks you will have a perfect 100% chance to trigger Magic Explo Explosion, effectively doubling your damage at all times at full stacks. Now, had Magic Explosion not gone off, Irene would have hit for 800, Thundercom would have had 300, she'd have hit again and left him at 1 in Overdrive and Berserk. Uh, but instead, Magic Explosion fires off and, you know, doubles the, the block damage basically back to exactly where she would have done a regular hit. And it, this is just, this is where things start to really get insane. Part of the reason why Irene's such a good boss killer. So, what does all this Magic Mumbo Jumbo really mean? What are all these stacks for exactly? So here we are on 54 Violent. Uh, we're about to engage Ben with Irene and she has 25 CMP stacks, right? And so, um, you know, normally, or rather, <laughs> normally Irene would deal 3,400 with Front Breakthrough. And keep in mind, Front Breakthrough is shredding all of Ben's blocks. So whatever, you know, like 120%, 130% he would normally have, he's got zero now. And so her regular hit will be 1,400 and her critical hit will be 3,400. But thanks to Magic Explosion at 25 stacks, which is a guaranteed chance to double, uh, that means this is going to double from 3,400 into 6,800 damage. This is, of course, enough to one-shot even Ben, who is, of course, one of the stronger characters in this game. And uh, this is what basically makes her such a monster. <laughs> and, of course, to add on top of Magic Explosion and the insanity that is CMP, is Irene's natural ability to use Linkage. This is part of her overcharge ability, Violent Panda. Uh, and of course, uh, it has a natural 50% chance to activate for her overcharge ability. However, you can take Explosive Red Panda style as her individual mastery to give it a 100% chance to activate. Uh, Linkage will then link every ability that you have with Violent Panda. So you can see she just fired it off here, took off a quarter of the uh, Red Destron's health, and she's just going to keep firing them off one after the other. This is so incredibly ridiculous that Irene can literally one-shot Destron's from full health to zero. And keep in mind, this guy was not EMP'd or anything. Uh, linkage is absolutely insane and uh, honestly total overkill most of the time, but um, if you really hate Destrons, this is the character for you. So now that we've gone over Irene's ridiculous offense, let's go over some of her defenses for a little bit. 
Um, she is going to get access to a mastery set called Moving Castle. This is going to give her a 100% chance to block uh, along with a 25% damage reduction. So that skull leader shot I'm worried about. And so, you know, this is not only going to give her the uh, incredible block rate and damage reduction, but also give nearby allies within her immediate four cover tiles the same exact uh, damage reduction, along with some resistances, which is pretty awesome. On top of moving castles, 100% block chance, damage reduction, and increased armor and resistances, uh, Irene is also going to have access to Magic Field and Iron Heart. Um, Magic Field is really quite ridiculous because if the incoming damage uh, is done by an ESP attack that's less than your ESP power, you'll only take 50% of the damage. And then on top of that, for Iron Heart, if the incoming damage falls behind 33% of the health, uh, you'll only take 33% of the damage, which basically leads to what you're seeing here. Um, this is Flamecron in Overdrive, who has one of the highest attack powers in the game, especially regarding ESP hits. And so, you know, he sits there, he attacks Irene, and probably hits her for, I don't know, somewhere in the realm of 50, which honestly is equivalent to the amount of damage she would take just from burn. It, it's just insanity how well she can tank. And we have the abilities overview. Uh, so Irene's basic ability, first form, Red Panda Kick. Uh, I do not recommend that you use this pretty much in all scenarios other than a last resort. Um, so normally, using a basic attack, and keep in mind, this is a physical type attack. Every other ability she has is fire based. So it's ESP attack, basically. Uh, so using a basic attack with 25 stacks of CMP would normally do nothing because CMP requires it to be an ESP attack to trigger, meaning it has to be one of these in order to trigger. Um, unless, of course, you're using Magic Explosion. Uh, magic Explosion triggers based on your stacks, and if you have 25 stacks with a 4% chance to trigger Magic Explosion per stack, you're going to guarantee that Magic Explosion triggers. The problem with this, then, is that Magic Withdrawal will only trigger off of an ESP attack, Meaning, you're going to go from 25 stacks to zero and have to start the process all over again. Uh, so again, this is very much a last resort option. Uh, you know, definitely don't use this where possible. All right, and then for general abilities, uh, my recommendation is going to be Firewheel Carriage, Front Breakthrough, and Flame Explosion. And I'd like to caveat this by saying... Um, Honestly, all of these are good options, except for with maybe not Somersault. And so this is actually because of a ability called Supporting Magic Circuit. Um, supporting Magic Sh Circuit, uh, in short, is going to take whatever the ratio is. So right here, normally Firewheel Carriage is 50% attack power, 25% ESP power. Instead, it's going to take the lower ratio will become as hot as the same as the higher ratio. So in that example for 50, 25, it becomes 50, 50, like you see here, uh, which is just absolutely insane. And so this applies to all of them uh, with the only exceptions being front breakthrough and violent panda. So in the case that the ratios are the same, front breakthrough is normally 80, 80, 80 attack power, 80 ESP power. You get a bonus 20% uh, damage to both. Uh, so making this 100 to 100, and then of course for Violent Panda, it's normally 100, 100, and so now you get 120, 120. Um, this gives massive damage bonuses, and this is honestly one of the core differences between Scion Battle Mage and Irene Battle Mage. Um, Scion has many ESP attacks that only incorporate ESP ratios, and as such, kind of waste support, supporting uh, Magic Circuit. Um, and it's also one of the reasons why it's so devastating on her. It's why Irene feels like she hits like a truck. Uh, but again, so this applies to every ability except for Somersault. And so you can have kind of lackluster damage with Somersault. It's not that you can't incorporate it. Just, you know, be aware that you will be doing a lot less. Um, some ratios become ridiculous. So example for Snatch, if I remember right, it's a 125% attack power and a 25% ESP power. That means you're getting a bonus 100% in ESP power, which is the focus of Battle Mage. Uh, so abilities like Snatch become ridiculous. 
personally, uh, I would probably use, I would actually remove front breakthrough and put in snatch, but I think for players that are newer to battle mage and still figuring it out, uh, this is kind of the core abilities, and then you can start messing with everything else. Even zero form has a place. Um, Irene does have a weakness to rangers, right? And so, uh, you know, if she's a main tank and she's getting shot by, let's say, four or five rangers, she's going to have like an eight turn cooldown on her cooldowns while also being silenced. And while you can get rid of the silence pretty easily, let's say with Anne or even having the golden two set ESP armor, uh, you can't get rid of the cooldown um, return easily. And that's where zero form would come in. Uh, this is very much for a kind of party main tank iron versus Irene versus a uh, solitary uh, tank fighter Irene. And I'll go into that a little bit more uh, in the later portion. Uh, but yeah, absolutely. Um, fire wheel carriage. This should be on every build ever. Um, it's a two hit attack and it's also dashing. Uh, so between those two, that makes this basically mandatory in my book. Um, you know, let's say you're fighting a Destron and, you know, every other hit is only going to hit once unless you're running a uh, Violent Panda and li uh, Linkage. So, um, you know, it, it's never really a question of damage for Irene. It's more a question of, you know, how many hits it's going to take to kill something massive. Um, front Breakthrough. This is the premier boss killer. Uh, you saw that earlier with Ben. Just absolutely devastating damage. Uh, de most importantly, defense is unavailable when hit. So regardless of their block, even Gyro with his 300 or whatever ridiculous amount of block will go down to zero from front breakthrough. Absolutely insane. Also, uh, quite often forgotten, hit chance it increased to 20%. This is really good against the Destrons because they have a much higher dodge threshold. Um, and then, of course, you have a 100% damage bonus in Still Stance, which, uh, you know, it's just awesome. This is such a great ability. It is on a slightly higher cooldown, though, so keep that in mind. Um, and then I actually did Flame Explosion because Battle Mage does not do so well running one shot, one kill. And so this acts as Irene's version of area damage. And... Um, it does, Flame Explosion does get incredible ratios. You see that 125, 125 plus 20% of her max sip there. Just nuts. Also important to note that this can use uh, be used as knockback. This is very good for gyro, knocking him into walls and stuff like that. So uh, this has great potential and great use, I think, on Battle Mage. Um, but certainly, all of these are good, and I recommend them for the most part, except Somersault. Um, you know, Cheer Drop is great. Snatch is amazing. Uh, Snatch is highly underrated. There's a 100% exposed state bonus on this. This is also a six tile attack. So if you have cover move or, or uh, cover on Irene for like Anne or Scion or Albus, this is definitely an incredible ability. Uh, and then, of course, for overcharge ability, uh, Violent Panda. This is absolutely nuts. Uh, of course, it gets that 20% bonus from supporting Magic Circuit to go to 120, 120. Totally insane. It's also pulling Fire SP. Totally insane because you have to have full Fire SP to even do overcharge. It has an incredibly high base modifier. Look at the 300 damage. Uh, so this can get really out of hand with trained attack as well. Um, not mentioned here, and I'm not sure why uh, Dandelion did this, is linkage. Uh, there is a base percent chance of linkage, and we'll go into that in just a sec. And we have the stats, personal masteries, and equipment page. Uh, so there's a lot to go over here, so uh, bear with me. Uh, so with individual masteries, um, all three of these are excellent, honestly. Uh, Justice in particular is very good during the storyline. Um, you're going to increase all damage caused to targets belonging to criminal organizations. And so this includes the Drifter Clowns, this includes Vendetta, this includes Spoonism. Uh, all these are organizations. And in short, you'll gain a bonus to all humans. Um, so this is amazing during the story and uh, just crazy. Uh, it kind of falls off slightly towards endgame because the focus no longer on killing humans but robots uh but certainly you know you could use this and have excellent effect and i really love that they gave her three useful masteries unlike some of the other characters um explosive red panda style so we'll hit back on this uh linkage as far as we understand has a base 50% chance on Violent Panda on its own, meaning a linkage can trigger on its own where she chains abilities back to back. 
Explosive Red Panda style is then going to give it another 50% and basically make it a 100% chance to trigger all of your linked abilities all together all at the same time. Uh, absolutely silly, absolutely insane. There's a lot of missing information in Irene's tooltips that I don't think uh, people have either seen or figured out. You'll notice linkage is not even remotely written into this uh, for Violent Panda. On top of that, um, Flame Explosion actually deals half damage, 50% damage to targets besides the main target. There's a lot of things that just aren't listed um, in honestly all of Irene's kit that really require kind of just playing to figure out. Uh, but anyway, so uh, Explosive Red Panda style, this is designed for people that like, let's say you you are making your Irene a Destron killer or a boss killer. Uh, this is probably what you'd want to take. And that's perfectly fine. Again, all three of these are amazing. Personally, I go with Lonely Hero because of the action time decrease. Um, and of course, crit chance, crit damage. I mean, it's just amazing stats across the board. But really, all of these are good, but my recommendation would be Lonely Hero. Okay, so uh, for class mastery, Battle Mage is gifted with an incredible one called Incapacitation. Um, short version is a basically guaranteed armor and resistance shred of 25%. Totally insane. Uh, really just ridiculous. I can't believe they put this on a class. And this is another reason why Battle Mage just is absolutely nuts. Um, of course, Irene is a Fire ESP user. Um, and for Fire SP users, they actually have a built-in Roar Victory. So your Fire SP increases by 20 per enemy you put out of action. That's really cool that they have a built-in Roar Victory. I think that's just that's just awesome. Additionally, you will gain damage on enemies by increasing your Fire SP. One Fire SP equals three damage. So 100 SP at a standard overcharge will be 300 Fire Damage. Just keep in mind that this is not taking into account armor and some other things. And, That'll be for a advanced combat video sometime in the future. Uh, so for stats, um, she has pretty decent stats. You won't you won't see the kind of like high health stats that martial artists will have on Irene, where you could potentially do four thousand very easily. Um, but you will have amazing defenses because of magic field and uh, iron heart and stuff like that. So uh, I would say average battle mage should probably have somewhere in the realm of two thousand. And it will still tank pretty darn well. Um, you won't need too much Vigor. Uh, and that's thanks to Core Magic Reactor. But also, for the build that I'm going to give you guys, we are going to be focusing a bit on Vigor Recovery uh, as it converts to Magic Optimization. Um, for Offensive Properties, and this is very important, uh, I wouldn't worry too much about Crit Chance or Crit Damage. Or, uh, you know, you do need Hit Chance. But you will want to focus most of your um, kind of damage into ESP power. And there's a few reasons for that. Uh, but primarily, you know, even though you have supporting magic circuit, you still want to boost ESP because of abilities like magic acceleration. You know, this is going to increase your ESP damage by 30%. And, uh, you know, remember, the concentrated magic power is going to be feeding into ESP power. So you're just adding and multiplying on top of it. And you really want to stick with that as opposed to using uh, kind of fist weapons. Uh, even though you could, doesn't mean you should. Um, for defensive properties, pretty standard tank stuff. Uh, keep in mind, this is not incorporating magic armor. She is going to get 200 resistance. Uh, so, honestly, um, Battle Mage has very, you know, solid tank stats. Uh, block and dodge, really not that important. Uh, you know, maybe from a, a shot from a thought or, you know, way who have breakthrough, that shred block in half. But generally, um, you know, the 100% block granted by Magic Armor is going to cover you through uh, pretty much all combat besides them. Uh, speed, pretty good. Um, there's a lot of AT modifiers for Battle Mage. So, uh, you know, even having kind of a lower speed, um, I say this often in my videos, my average team speed is 115. Uh, but even having that, you know, what would be slow for my team is 100. Uh, the amount of AT reduction that Battle Mage has uh, is incredibly fast, incredibly fast, and you know, hopefully, um, we'll get to go over that uh, shortly here. Um, so gearing, uh, this is probably the most, uh, one of the most talked about things uh, for Battle Mage for sure. Gearing can go in a million different directions, so uh, don't quote me on anything here. Uh, but I will say, so obviously, the heroic. Blackthorn Bangle, if you are tired of Destrons, this is your weapon. 
Um, this is absolutely devastating. You get 50% shred uh, from the bangle, you get 25% from in incapacitation, Battle Mage's class mastery, and you could in theory throw on magic penetration for a literal 100% resistance shred. Uh, pretty wild. I find it totally overkill. Um, one of the better items to use actually is the gem crafter's bangle. This is going to reduce your cast delay, and this is particularly good on team Irene battle mages, uh, meaning you're focusing her as part of the team and not having her off to the side doing hero and uh, kind of solitary combat. Um, but really, this is up to you. I would just say don't use Knuckles because you're not going to be boosting your attack power as much as you're going to be boosting your ESP power. Um, Golden, also, you know, it's always a favorite of mine. Golden's not bad. Uh, it's nice to have the two set for immunity to silence. Um, for armor, this is really up to the player. Uh, I go with the three-piece golden set. Um, it is going to improve the majority of your abilities. You know, more, majority of, of Irene's abilities are melee. Uh, so, you know, front breakthrough and uh, firewheel carriage and snatch and all those. So all these will apply for the three-set bonus of the golden. It's also going to feed a little bit into the block percentage. And uh, I also like the gold leather uniform because it also gives a plus one to move distance, which is cool, while keeping her speed pretty darn high. Um, and then finally for gear, uh, again, this is definitely up to the player. Um, Goldwing Charm, you can definitely get acceleration going. Uh, really, there's there's <laughs> there's a ton of items here that you could use. So, uh, you know, leave that up to the player. But honestly, as long as you're focusing around ESP power, uh, it's going to be a good time. All right, and we have the Mastery Board. This is the Firefox build, and I am going to give you guys two builds, one for Solitary and one for Team, and uh, it'll probably make a lot more sense once we start going through it. But the Firefox build, believe it or not, the very first Mozilla logo, after the decline of Netscape, uh, they actually had to change their name and opted for an animal that was not well known on the internet at the time. Uh, this was actually the Red Panda. Uh, unfortunately, people thought that the animal on Mozilla logo was a fox. Uh, but in reality, this Firefox is actually a red panda, which is a protected species in Asia. Uh, and even funnier, um, there was honestly just a mistake when translating red panda from Chinese to English. And this is how we got Firefox. I don't know. It just made sense to me at the time. And, you know, Irene loves her red panda. So I thought it was pretty cool. Anyway. Uh, as always, feel free to pause, take a look, take a gander, see what you would keep, see what you would co throw out. Uh, so for your core offensive masteries, of course we're going to be taking Magic Explosion. Um, one, Magic Explosion is taking into account all of her major masteries. Magic Duplication, which is multiplying your CMP level uh, by two. Magic Absorption, which is giving you CMP based on landing a critical strike and removes buffs, by the way. Uh, magic Withdrawal, of course, which will give you back your CMP after burning it, so 25 to 12. Um, it just makes up the core of Battle Mage. You really can't make a build without this or it would be silly. Uh, just important to know, but, you know, this is what also makes her her boss killer. That 100% damage bonus is what puts her over the top compared to other classes. So, uh, just absolutely nuts. We're also going to be taking uh, Magic Circulation. Uh, so... One thing I didn't get a chance to go over is magic optimization. Uh, this is going to convert every vigor recovery you get is going to change into 1% damage bonus. And so uh, circulation incorporates an ability called release magic. Every time you use an ESP ability, there's no nothing else behind this. You're going to get release magic. Uh, this stacks 10 times up to uh, you know three vigor recovery per stack, 30 vigor recovery just right there. Also, keep in mind that Concentrated Magic Power, while it does give 500 ESP power at 25 stacks, it also gives Vigor Recovery. So that's another 25 Vigor Recovery or 25% damage on top of the 30 from um, Release Magic. So that's 55 right there. That's not counting Core Magic Reactor, which is giving you 10 Vigor Recovery. It's not counting gear that you put on her. Uh, so as you can imagine, uh, Irene is probably somewhere in the realm of, I don't know, 75% bonus damage, you know, feeding into Magic Explosion, feeding into everything else that she has, uh, just totally insane. And for the core defensive masteries, we're actually going to be taking uh, Moving Castle. Um, this is kind of a no-brainer. It's going to have to start with Magic Armor. 
Uh, this is going to give Irene a bonus 200 resistance as well as that 100% block rate. That is just so core. Uh, moving Castle is actually going to um, reduce the damage taken. And of course, uh, damage reduction or DR is very important, especially as you enter towards end game where things start doing out of hand damage. Um, but moving castle as a whole, you know, it's going to have Iron Heart in there, which I showed earlier. It's going to have Magic Field, which I showed earlier. You know, all these damage reductions that are just reducing and reducing. This is kind of why Irene can get away with the idea of only having 2,000 health, but still be basically a main tank. Um, and then we're also going to be taking Magic Conversion. Uh, you can actually also take Magic Relief, but I prefer Magic Conversion because it has better mastery set synergy. Um... Of course, this will include Close Combatant. Uh, this is amazing. This is just more damage dealt and more uh, damage reduced and taken uh, when getting attacked. So uh, you really can't go wrong with that. Just keep in mind that it is adjacent combat. Um, as well as, you know, incorporating that kind of synergy from Magic Explosion, from Withdrawal and Absorption. And we have a quick defensive showcase here. So we are on 54 Violent. Uh, you can see Irene's kind of at the front with my other two tanks here. And, uh, you know, we're entering the kind of danger zone with Ben and his entire army. Uh, she is running 25 CMP. She is running a ton of buffs from Mutant. Um, but she's very low health because she just took a hit from Ben. So she's at, you know, 440 or so. And instead of finishing off Ben, I actually decide for, to push her forward even okay. more. This would not normally be a good idea with a character at 440 health. Uh, but in Irene's uh, case, this would be perfectly fine. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and attack um, Enhanced Schwartz here. He gets his Overwatch shot for a grand total of 85 damage, and of course it gets blocked. Um, since the Deshons cannot actually shred any block, once you hit 100% block, that's all they can do. Uh, so, you know, one, you're seeing magic armor at work here. Two, Iron Heart triggers because it's um, underneath the 33% threshold. And now that he's gotten his hit in, she gets to go. Unfortunately, she does miss one of the hits, but she lands the other. And remember, uh, d the... Schwartz and Enhanced Schwartz have the ESP neutralizing armor, so they actually can't get a crit, but she still hits for the 25% health anyway. Uh, this, of course, triggers Magic Explosion, but also Magic Conversion. And so uh, this conversion of healing that I showed just earlier, look at the heal for 1100. So when you're getting hit for 80, but healing for 1100, you're just not going to go down. Uh, and so Enhanced Schwartz does a counter. She blocks it, of course, again. Uh, again, Iron Heart. And really, all she did in that encounter was heal herself and damage Schwartz at the same time. And this is what makes Irene such a devastating tank. And for the core support masteries, uh, this is where it's all going to start coming together. And obviously, there's a lot going on here. But Magic Accelerating Circuit is absolutely mandatory. Not just to get that first CMP started. And that does help. Remember... If CMP is not activated, it will create CMP for you at the end of your turn. Uh, but at the start of your turn, Magic Duplication is going to decrease your AT by 1 per 2 CMP. Uh, so if you're at 25... <laughs> If you're at 25 CMP at the uh, kind of start of your turn, because remember, magic duplication is happening at the very beginning, multiplying whatever you have by two. Uh, you know, this is going to shred a good 12 AT off of your um, your beginning turn there. So if she's at, let's say, 48, she'll go down to 36, which is a very common factor. And uh, it's all about the AT here. Um, and then, of course, at the end of your turn, you know, let's say you go and you attack something. You burn through Magic Explosion at 25 stacks. You go down to 12 from uh, Magic Withdrawal, right? And so it gives you half back. That's going to put you at 12 AT and subtract 1 AT per 2, or basically 6 in that scenario. So you're going to go from, you know, that 48 down to 36, that 36 down to 30 best condition remember you're going to be healing yourself so you should always be at full health for best condition uh this is going to shred another 10 at from 30 down to 20 and then from there uh, of course you know we're going to be having wandering brawler which will take you from 20 down to 10 at uh giving her incredibly short turns and uh this is one of the reasons why i don't really think you should take one shot one kill um on battle mage because if you try to do multiple actions in a single turn you're gonna burn through all of your cmp it's much better for her to just get really quick turns and that's particularly why wandering brawler and solitary fighter are so good on her and why i'm incorporating it into the solitary 
Firefox build. Keep in mind, I am going to give you guys a team build as well. Um, and then the second core support mastery for sure, overflowing magic. I uh, showed you guys earlier, um, starting a turn under magic acceleration is going to generate two CMP. Magic acceleration is going to feed into your CMP from the 20... Um, the 20 ESP power per stack. It's going to feed into your bangle that you're using. It's going to feed into so many things that it just gets so out of hand so quickly. Uh, but most importantly, it's about getting those stacks to 25. And as you saw earlier, you know, if you're running just magic accelerating circuit, you'll get there in five turns. If you're running overflowing energy, you'll get there in three. And honestly, at 16, really, you can start fighting from, you know, turn two onward. So uh, this is absolutely mandatory. Love these two abilities. They make her quick as all hell. You can see how powerful Battle Mage is with the synergy. And uh, you know, hopefully you guys really enjoy it. And so before we hit the alternative masteries, I do want to hit up the team board that I was telling you guys about. So solitary board is really built for, you know, kind of lonely hero, um, you know, triggering hero so that, you know, she can't see her allies. She's a little bit off on her own, uh, you know, lone wolf. You kind of get the theme here. Um, this is going to make her incredibly fast, but she is, you know, for the most part going to be on her own. But believe you me, Irene can most definitely be on her own, especially with this kind of build. Um, but let's say that you wanted to make her kind of like a main tank for your team. This would be the Firefox team build. And so what this does is it converts a little bit more health. You're going to be running body training. Um, you know, give you that extra boost of health. You're also going to be running a lot more things related to uh, improving magic and the improving magic um, three set trio. Uh, so the improving magic uh, three set trio uses utility magic improved magic shield and magic research student uh, that solitary does not have so it's going to boost your speed and hit rate which irene can have issues with remember she she won't have action time issues but she can have speed issues for sure it's also going to boost her flat esp power so she's just going to be more solid uh as a team member she's going to have that more damage reduction from having um you know magic shield distortion field She's also not going to be getting that kind of, uh, you know, standing alone AT reduction. So we're going to be taking improving magic to reduce her um, casting delay times. And then, of course, utility magic to feed into magic optimization. Uh, all of these just really feed into a very well-rounded main tank. And I think you guys will really like this. Oh, and uh, also important to note that, you know, instead of Lonely Hero, you might use Justice or Explosive Red Panda style as, you know, if you're going to be surrounded by teammates, you're not going to be able to trigger Lonely Hero. Um, so for alternative masteries, um, so I absolutely love Mutant. Uh, but in case you don't want to run Mutant, let's say you're just trying new things, uh, I do recommend cauterize as kind of a secondary option this is only one training point mutant is a devastating four training points um i do highly recommend mutant with this build for a lot of reasons and most of them you can just see in the bite all the fire and ice and lightning turning all that into crazy buffs is just insane but um cauterize is certainly very good and uh certainly you can get use out of this um also for those of you that absolutely hate Destrons or you need just a little bit more damage, uh, Magic Penetration is absolutely ideal. Um, you know, it is incorporating this on the team build, but not the solitary builds. Let me uh, let me actually switch back here just so you guys can see what I'm seeing. Um, so, you know, it's not incorporating uh, Magic Penetration on the solitary build. And that's because, honestly, at 50% from the Bangle, 25% from um, the Class Mastery, this will put you, of course, at 100% resistance shred on machines, 50% on normal targets. Total overkill, in my personal opinion. But, um, you know, if you really need the bonus damage for Destrons, let's say you're kind of up in your game into high risk, high reward against the Destrons, and, you know, it might be time to uh, step up to this. Um, and then, of course, uh, Magic Training, which is, again, incorporated into the team build. This gives you that extra bit of health, a little bit of resistance, a little bit of uh, ESP power, a little bit of hit chance. It's all these tiny little things that make the difference between the team build and the solitary build. Both are very good. It's really just your play style. 
And then, of course, like I showed you guys, the three different sets uh, for improving magic, improved magic shield, magic research st uh, student, and utility magic. These all feed into her so well. And uh, really, that's just the difference between the solitary and team board is these six masteries. All right, guys, and we have the Firefox Showcase. Uh, I think it's actually much more important for you to understand how it starts from the beginning. So we're at turn you know, one here with Irene just getting out of the box here. And I think most players would do a single move and then activate magic armor. Uh, I don't recommend that because you can actually get, uh, you can trigger running, of course, for a reduced AT increase. And the goal is to get uh, 25 CMP as fast as humanly possible. Also keep in mind, magic acceleration. This is uh, mandatory for overflowing energy, costs zero action points. So instead of actually triggering magic armor, we're going to run her over to this corner. And every map has a corner like this. And you, you can see I'm checking the vision here uh, with combat preview with the, of course, uh, white lines being her actual vision gauge. And so this is very important for lonely hero and triggering hero. You know, you want to be able to get hero running as soon as possible, right out the gate. Uh, so, you know, obviously she's at zero, um, zero CMP at the moment, but look at her turn already, thanks to uh, the running portion. So, you know, everyone else is still getting out of the gate and Irene's going to get her second turn here uh, very shortly. And so uh, if we skip um, into roughly her turn next, uh, you're going to see, one, look at her CMP. Uh, she jumped the six. So, of course, that is due to um, magic accelerating circuit, adding plus one for the first time of not having any. Overflowing magic, plus two, so a total of three. Magic duplication uh, for basically times two or six. And so notice everything that's triggering now. She's getting acceleration from uh, gold, um, gold wing charm. She's getting hero because of that vision that I just showed you guys. And so remember, hero is going to add to her speed. So we're not, we're still not going to actually add her magic armor yet. You know, we're going to keep running to get that additional AT decrease. And you can see, you know, her immediate turn now is uh, tied up with Anne. She really doesn't have these long, you know, 40 or 50 AT turns. So let's go ahead and go to her next. Um, and so on this next turn, obviously, uh, we're going to be going um, 6 plus 2, 2 from Overflowing Energy into 8, 8 times 2 from Magic Duplication into 16. Uh, and so, you know, she's running, starting to get the full steam now. We're continuing to run because once you hit 25 CMP, then it's a good time to throw on uh, Magic Armor. So if we uh, skip ahead a little bit, uh, into about here, I think. Yeah. So if we skip to here, notice that on this turn, she's now at 25 CMP. And so now that she's at 25 CMP and you're getting that extra action time reduction, this is a good time to throw on magic armor. Now, of course, if your party is not advanced or you've kind of met the enemy where you know you're going to need her to be fighting, uh, that'll be a different story. But generally, this would be a much better idea as a whole. Uh, and then, of course, uh, from here, uh, Albus kills everything. And so Irene gets up again. You know, she's running her 25 CMP. And this is where you start to see things really get out of hand. So we're going to go ahead, move her one, and pop the excitement potion. Now, notice, uh, you know, look at the action time. Let's take Scion here at 13 AT. Uh, you know, 3 AT pass. And so uh, Irene's now at 14. Uh, and Obviously, this is when it's going to start getting really, really out of hand. Um, so on that next turn that she gets, you know, where it, you know her speed is getting absolutely ridiculous. She's got 25 CMP. She's running hero. She's got excitement. She's got a ton of other buffs. Now she's at the front of the pack, uh, which is exactly where you want your tank to be. And so we're going to go ahead and have her engage um, basically the main party in 54 Violent here with Ben and friends and, you know, let her get into combat here. So interesting to note, you know, of course, magic explosion fires off. Of course, she's at 25 and that'll bring her down to 12. Notice, uh, let's take Elisa at 6 AT, right? And so 4 AT passes, right? Based off of Elisa, which means Irene's turn was a total of 10 AT. You know, and so, you know, she goes from there, uh, she gets her, her, 
you know, that turn. And now she's up again. And so you know, you saw uh, Magic Duplication go off there. She's back up to 25 CMP. And this is keeping her action time moving forward. And basically, this is how you want to go through uh, for the rest of the fight. And this is what makes Irene Battle Mage a total monster. All right, guys, that wraps up this video. Uh, Battle Mage Irene is ridiculous. Uh, you know, of course, we've seen many tanks come and go, but to see a tank also be a boss killer is unheard of. And uh, the way that she can basically one shot Destrons is totally insane. Uh, but anyway, if you guys like the video, uh, of course, like and subscribe. Uh, follow me on Twitch and YouTube. And uh, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and uh, see you guys next time.